Most popular slotted tungsten beads you tie with suck, and you probably don't even know it. Today, let's get deep and nerdy into the world of tungsten beads, the beads easily taken for granted to get our nymphs down in the strike zone. You're choosing tungsten because you want the heaviest beads, right? So stick around to learn what to look for as I uncover the truth. You'll never look at beads the same way again. Okay, so in order to know which beads are good and bad, we first need to talk about what beads need to do. So right up front, we're trying to balance choosing a bead that fits your fly's proportions and as heavy as possible. That's why we're choosing tungsten over brass, right? It's just heavier. So it's pretty common these days to see bigger oversized beads tied on, and sometimes, if we're being honest, the fish are just eating that bead. The rest of the materials are insignificant. So in an effort to rein that in a bit, and try to change the trends back to more balanced flies, let's figure out what to look for. So here's what I've done. I've purchased slotted tungsten beads from most of the big suppliers, and in a perfect world, they'd all be the same size so I can directly compare them, but they don't all offer the same sizes. So I'm using their bead closest to three and a half millimeters without going over. And to directly compare them, I'm gonna create two scores so we can line them up and see all the different size beads together. More on that later though. To figure all this out, we're gonna look at three major things. Number one, I'll take accurate mass measurements using a gram scale and from there measure their volume and attempt to calculate how pure the tungsten is, AKA how dense are they? Next, I'm gonna measure how wide the hook gaps are and see how that impacts the overall mass. And last, I'm gonna look at quality control and consistency. Are the beads in a pack all the same size? Do they have sharp edges that cut thread? We'll try to take a look and see if the first bead is the same as the last bead in every pack. Equipped with actual data, we can figure out which beads are worth your money. If you'd like the TLDR, look in the description for a link to the post where I have all the beads sorted from best to worst. For those that like to go into the weeds, let's go deeper. The most common thing people talk about is tungsten purity. I've seen countless forum discussions talking about and speculating who has the purest tungsten and thus the heaviest beads. Now they'll argue that if the beads contain any iron and stick to a magnet, they can conclude that it's not pure tungsten and it'll be lighter than beads that are pure. That is sound reasoning, and purity is interesting to talk about in forums, so let's find out if magnetism actually matters. I've carefully weighed each bead using a gram scale, and to account for margin of error and small bead inconsistencies, I'm weighing 10 beads at a time and using an average. Since they're all slightly different sizes, knowing their absolute mass isn't enough to straight up compare them. So let's build on that and figure out how dense are they. And for that, I'll need to know their volume. So they're hollow. I can't just measure their dimensions with a micrometer. I need to use water displacement to figure this out. So I precisely filled a five mil graduated cylinder with two mils of distilled water. I added beads until the water was raised by one half mil. Taking that volume of water divided by the number of beads submerged, I can calculate the volume of each bead and determine the density. The higher the density, generally speaking, the more pure the tungsten is. Now I worded that vaguely because I can't really say what metals are used. Most common metals like iron, nickel, copper, and lead are much less dense so any amount of non-tungsten metal will affect the overall density. There are metals like iridium and osmium that have greater density, but they're rare and unlikely to be present in any significant quantity. So in my first round of measurements, I learned that the surface tension of the beads was holding bubbles inside the gaps. This is bad because the bubbles displace extra water and will skew the volume upward, making the beads appear more dense than they actually are. To mitigate this, I tried swirling the graduated cylinder and that would release some of the bubbles, but I could still see more bubbles holding on. So next I started lightly tapping the cylinder on the bench and hundreds of micro bubbles would get released. This seemed to work, but with every single tap, more and more bubbles would escape. There was never a point where the bubbles would just stop getting released. So unsure what to do at this point, I figured the amount of air trapped after a number of taps was small because I couldn't see any more bubbles. So I ran the numbers on each bead after 10 taps. Here's what I found. Panic and Aventic beads were the most dense. Case closed, right? Well, the density of pure tungsten is 19.2 grams per mil. So right off the bat, we know I wasn't able to get all the air out. The Hannock and the Aventic beads both were measured over 20 grams per mil. Consulting with fellow fly fisherman and professional research lab manager Rosin, he suggested I use the sonicator. It's a piece of equipment that uses high frequency sound to break up and release trapped air. An actual sonicator is super expensive, way outside the scope of this video. There are cheaper ultrasonic baths for cleaning things like jewelry, and that might have gotten me close, but I don't think any of this actually matters. Let me explain. Circling back to our goal, we want the heaviest bead for a given size, and that's why the industry has shifted away from brass beads and lead wire wraps to tungsten beads. So may I turn your attention to the next data point, the width of the hook gap. B 
beads that have wider gaps have less metal inside than beads that have narrow gaps. Less metal means it's lighter. I'm not trying to talk down to you as I lay this out, but nobody talks about this. I've seen tons of conversations talking about using magnets to compare tungsten purity and almost no one mentions the hook gaps. Just a quick side note about magnetism. Only two packs of beads had no magnetic effect and found immeasurable correlation to how heavy they are. Ironically, one of the two bags of wholesale fly company beads was magnetic. This is skipping ahead to bead consistency a little bit, but it was odd that one bag was magnetic and the other wasn't. I don't know how much iron, nickel, or cobalt an alloy needs to react to a magnet, but it must be small. Magnetism plays no significant effect on how heavy they are. So back to hook gaps. Using a digital micrometer, I made accurate measurements of the gaps and the results speak for themselves. I created a score relating the gap to its diameter so we can easily compare the different bead sizes. A higher score means the slots are narrower. So sorting the results by the score, you can see that the beads with the higher gap score are the heaviest. More metal makes them heavier, go figure. So hook gaps are clearly the biggest factor in affecting how heavy your beads are. Simply put, the beads with the narrowest gaps are the heaviest, full stop. Narrow gaps don't just make your fly sink faster. They also make the beads much faster to lock in, needing fewer thread wraps. If the beads are sloppy, it can take 15 to 20 wraps to lock them in. You're wasting a bit of thread, but most importantly, you're wasting your time. With tight gaps, you can lock a bead in with about five wraps, that's it. This is great for many patterns where thread buildup behind the bead can be a problem. Less buildup gives you more room to tie in bulky things like soft tackles or a dubbed collar. There are any number of things that can go wrong when you pick up a bag of beads, and I don't think any manufacturer is immune from this. Sometimes imperfections get through. Much of what you hear about is anecdotal, and even with my findings, I have just a single bag of some of these brands, so it's a pretty small sample size. But early in my tying days, I picked up some bags of wholesale fly company beads on several recommendations from other tires. They're cheap, like almost absurdly cheap, but I quickly found that many of their beads have sharp edges on them, and I was cutting thread a lot. So even though the price is right, they're probably not worth it. They also have some of the widest gaps, so you might as well just stay away. Fulling mill was another big surprise for me. The actual size of the beads was super inconsistent. The package said they were 3.2 millimeters, but I measured everything between 3.3 and 3.65 millimeters. That's pretty bad. Most of the brands varied slightly between their measured diameter and the package size, but they were consistent bead to bead. I don't know if this bag was a fluke, but do keep an eye out for this with fully milled beads. So in conclusion, when you're shopping, hook gap is something that's easy to see when you're comparing beads on the shelf, but your local fly shop might only carry a brand or two. So to see how everyone stacks up, you can read through the chart on my website, link below in the description. That's a resource I plan to update with time, adding different sizes, brands, and colors. It'll be a living document. So be sure to bookmark it, check back when you need to. Now you may notice Driftstone beads are at the top of that list. When my friend and YouTuber Troutflies first shed light on hook gaps for me, I went on the hunt to find the best beads out there. And at the time I found Firehole and Aventic were decent, but it frustrated me that 90% of the beads out there have wide gaps and worse yet, no one was talking about it. I wanted to help the tying community out, so I sought out a manufacturer that would make beads with the narrowest gaps. So I found what I think are the best beads you can buy anywhere. I have them in popular colors like copper, gold, silver, black, nickel, and matte black at very competitive prices because there's no middleman. If you're a fly tire who ties with beads, check out my shop at driftstone.co and pick some up. You won't be able to tie on sloppy beads again. Oh, one more thing. If you know any fly tires, it would mean the world to me if you'd share this video with them. Bringing these beads to market has been very time consuming and has taken some financial investment, so spreading the word helps a ton. Buying product in the Driftstone Fly Shop is the best way to support me and the channel. As I said above, they're probably the best beads on the market and they're very affordable. I'm a David fighting up against an army of Goliaths out there, so thank you and good luck on the water everyone. Godspeed. <laughs>